Hey guys. Hello. Eddie's trying to show us stuff here. Yes. What are you trying to show us? So the next component that I wanted to make a DIY of was the diode. And um, I, before explaining how to make the DIY diode and how to measure its efficacy, I wanted to give a brief and basic overview of what a diode was. All right. Yeah. So on a electronic schematic, you'll find it looking like this. A triangle with a line next to it. And essentially what a diode, do diode <laughs> does is it allows current to go in one direction, but not the other. Um, it rectifies. This positive side is known as the anode. This negative side is known as the cathode. And my nursing way of remembering this is cathode, like a catheter. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> okay, so then, um, whenever you look at an actual, it's kind of difficult to see this one, but if you look at an actual diode, there will be a line indicating which side is the cathode, which side the current goes out. So you got to be careful, especially if you're trying to limit where current goes to make sure that you know which way it's going to come out. Alright, now if you cut into a diode, what you're going to find is two different uh, types of semiconductors. And semiconductors are uh, like a type of, I guess, metal? Yeah, a type of conductor that's not so great at conducting and not so great at insulating. Um, and you'll find two different types of semiconductors one known as a p-type and one known as an n-type. All right, so let's look first at your pure semiconductor, silicon. It's wonderful, it's great. I have here three molecules of, or atoms of silicon, and around them, each of these atoms are eight electrons, okay? When they bond together, they bond lovingly and happy and wonderful. Now, through a process called doping, kind of like spiking the punch, you put in, uh, say, boron, okay? And this atom of boron right here has one less electron notated by this circle. So it's missing an electron, uh, but that's okay. I mean, what are you going to do, right? And these are known as holes, like holes in the ground. Now, for the n-type, what you do is you dope it with phosphorus, so you kind of bombard this silicon sheet with phosphorus, and you end up with uh, atoms that have extra, one extra electron, and that's known as the n-type, okay? So here's, say, for instance, that extra electron. All right. So now you put them next to each other, the P and the N, together forever. And what you end up with, here's a P atom, here's an N atom. You'll notice the hole for the P, uh, so one missing electron, and you'll notice the extra electron for the N. And what they want to do is they want to come together and have sweet, sweet love. So, when you put them in together in a, in a whole group, it's like a matchmaking fair, right? Maker fair. Matchmaker fair. <laughs> okay, so all of these holes and these electrons that can move through space and time and all that, they come towards each other. And what happens is they bind together. Okay, and around them, so let's see, we've got these N type uh, atoms giving away their electron. And once they've given away a negatively charged electron, they end up becoming po slightly positive. And then, these holes that are being matched off leave, that are slightly, that give a slight positive charge to the atom, them leaving causes this atom to become slightly negative, which is why you see here a whole bunch of negatives from losing their holes and a whole bunch of positives here from losing their electrons. Okay? All right. So I'm thinking, well, you've got them all matching. What's going to stop these 
electrons and holes from ever stopping wanting to get together, right? Okay, here we have this, this area that was created. You'll notice that on the P side, we still have those positively charged holes. Well, what's going to happen is, like magnets, these positively, positively charged holes are going to be um, repelled by these positively charged losers who lost their electrons. And likewise, you see these elect extra electrons on the doped silicon. They're going to be repelled by these electrons, or these uh, negatively charged losers who lost their holes. And the place that blocks them is known as the depletion zone. Da -da -da. Okay. All right. So now, let's hook this diode up to a battery. We've got your PN, and we've got this junction here known as the depletion zone. If you put a battery to it with the negative side going towards the P, this positively charged area, and if you have a, the positive side of the battery going to the negatively charged area with all these extra electrons, what's going to happen is these holes that are positively charged are going to be attracted to the negative side of the battery. And then these electrons are going to be attracted to the positive side of the battery. And what happens is this depletion zone ends up getting wider. So current can't get past this depletion zone because it's kind of like an insulator. Problem, right? So what you do is you just flip the battery over. You got this battery and here we have the positive side and what happens is these positive holes end up getting repelled from the positive side of the battery. And so they're going to want to head towards the middle, towards the depletion zone, where all their other friends are getting hooked up. Likewise, these electrons are going to be repelled from the negative side. And so both of these holes and electrons, they're all going to go towards each other. And the force of the re repelling is going to cause them to come together and get matched after all. Now the interesting problem is, according to how batteries work, charge or current goes from the negative side of the battery to the positive side of the battery. And yet we're saying that current is only allowed from the P side to the N side. So everything I've looked at you know, online actually doesn't really do a good job of explaining it, only to say that the net current is from the P side to the N side. So there's a constant crossing over, but there's more crossing over this way than there are crossing over this way, and hence, overall current goes from the P to the N, from the anode to the cathode. So, we're going to take a real diode here, and the stripe is on the right side. And I'm going to use the diode function. Whew. Now keeping in mind that the black lead is the negative and the red is the positive, let's put them in the way that they should go. So this is the P side and this is the N side. And we see that woo, current goes through just as we would expect. Now if we were to flip this, this being the negative and this being the positive, just like in a battery, doo -doo, nothing happens, which means that, whoop, that no current is going through this diode. And that sounds about right, because I think the depletion zone stopped everybody. Well... <laughs> I don't understand that question that you raised, but I also haven't ever seen anyone else explain it well either. Oh. So I think that pretty well, pretty well covers it. Yeah. So if anybody has an answer, please, by all means, let us know. Okay? All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.